Perfect. Thank you very much once more. Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Um, today's topic will be Azure Work Protection with Bot Manager Scenarios. My name is Andrew Mathu. I'm a product manager in the Azure Network Security Customer Experience and Engineering Team. My co-host for today is Toby Otoloring and you're all glad that you've joined us for this webinar. For today's agenda, this is what you're going to take a look at. We'll first start off with an overview of Azure WAF Web Application Firewall. I will then take a look at bots, have an overview of bots, what they are and some of their characteristics. Next, we'll take a look at protecting ourselves against malicious bots. Uh, we look at how you can protect our networks and applications against these uh, malicious bots. And then finally, my colleague Toby uh, will go through a demonstration of some scenarios on how we can detect and prevent uh, malicious bots with Azure Web Application Firewall. Finally, if we have time, we'll also go through um, some questions that maybe might not have been answered in the chat. Uh, just for reference, um, this webinar is based on a blog that was recently published. If you go over to our Azure Network Security blog community space, you'll see the latest blog is on Azure Web Application Firewall Bot Manager Scenarios. So take a look at that. And of course, with that and with this webinar, you'll be in a better position to protect yourselves against any malicious bots. Finally, if you have any feedback, please feel free uh, to give us your feedback on this webinar as well as any feature feedback on our network security products. You can use this link aka.ms slash Azure NetSec feedback. So to begin us off, we'll start with Azure WAF overview. So Azure WAF is a layer 7 file um, that provides centralized protection of web applications and this can be both internal and external facing. So the protection it offers is from common vulnerabilities and also exploits um, and also web attacks such as SQL injections, uh, cross-site scripting and so on. And these applications can be in Azure on premises or even in another cloud provider. When Azure WAF is enabled with services such as Azure DDoS protection and Azure Firewall, uh, the WAF can be used to implement a zero trust network security architecture in the Azure Cloud. Uh, the WAF, as you can see in the diagram, can either be enabled on the global edge with Azure Front Door, so that's at a global level, or at a regional level using the application gateway. This WAF is platform managed, um, allowing teams um, to focus on custom rule creations and also exclusions when it's needed. Within the WAF, we have what we call the managed rule sets. And these are already predefined for OWASP top 10 protection, bot protection, and also more when we have when using uh, the Microsoft proprietary Microsoft Threat Intelligence Center rules or Mystic rules. Uh, WAF is able to respond quickly to new attacks that are identified, and this is done by publishing new rules in the known CVEs rule group. Um, if an already existing rule group does not block by default. If this is a new unknown threat, it will be added to the known CVEs. And then this in conjunction with the mystic rules will offer comprehensive protection. Azure Earth also has what we call a custom rules engine. So these custom rules are you allow um, the user or the customer to create their own rules that are evaluated, evaluated for each request that passes through the WAF. Azure WAF also has DevOps integration, so you can use ARM templates, REST, API, PowerShell, CLI, and Terraform. And these are all methods that you can use to easily build, deploy, and manage the Azure WAF. Lastly, uh, WAF provides metrics and logs um, through Azure Monitor that assist in incident investigation. And this can also be ingested by Microsoft Sentinel or another third party SIM. So going to a deeper level on the actual web uh, application firewall rules, uh, these are found within the policies. 
And we have two types. Uh, we have the managed rule sets and we have the custom rules. So within the managed rule sets, we have the core rule sets, the default rule sets, and also we have bot protection. So first of all, starting with um, the core rule sets, this, the core rule set and the default rule sets, these protect offer protection against application based attacks and threats. And some of these examples here you can see are the HTTP protocol anomalies, SQL injections, uh, or cross site scripting, uh, amongst others. Um, apart from the core rule set and the default rule set, we have the Microsoft Bot Manager rule set. And this rule set can be used to take custom actions uh, or requests from all bot categories. So currently there are three main uh, bot categories within uh, this bot protection rule set. We have the first category, which is for bad bots. And bad bots include bots from uh, malicious IP addresses and bots that have falsified the identities. Uh, malicious IP addresses are sourced from Microsoft Threat Intelligence feed and they are updated every hour. We have the good bots and this include validated search engines such as Google Bot, Bing Bot and other trusted uh, user agents. And finally, we have unknown bots and these are classified through published user agents uh, without additional validation. So for example, market analyzer, feed fetchers and also data collection agents. Um, unknown bots also include, uh, can include malicious IP addresses that are sourced from Microsoft Threat Intelligence uh, feeds, uh, medium confidence IP indicators of compromise. So in terms of the category, those are the main three categories. In terms of actions, uh, we have a couple of actions that can be taken um, on bot traffic. So if bot protection is enabled, incoming requests uh, that match the bot rules are blocked, allowed, or logged uh, based on the configured action. So malicious bots are blocked. Um, verified search engine crawlers are allowed. Unknown search engine crawlers are blocked, and unknown bots are logged, and this is by default. The last type of rule here, you can see the main rule category are the custom rules. And these are the rules that allow you to create um, your own rules. So you can be able to author your own rule, you can be able to have granularity on what you actually want to, to, to block uh, in terms of traffic going through the WAF. And these are evaluated for each request that passes through the WAF. Uh, within the custom rules, you, can, you have what we call the match type, and this supports variable, several variables such as the, the IP address, uh, geolocation, and string. We also have the rate limit match type, which is supported in WAF or Frondo and can be combined uh, with match rule conditions. Great, so having seen an overview of Azure WAF, this next section will take a look at bots, which also forms uh, the main basis for this webinar. So to start us off, uh, we are going to define what a bot is and what are its characteristics. So in essence, the most basic form Bots are automated software programs uh, that are designed to perform specific tasks, are um, also on the internet. So they can be created for various purposes, and this can be both beneficial and malicious. So like we saw in uh, some of the classifications that we went through uh, within the Azure bot rule set, um, there are good bots, there are malicious bots, there are unknown bots, and this applies also when it comes to their purpose. In terms of the characteristics, there are various characteristics that are found uh, within a bot. So the first one is automation. So bots are automated programs that can perform tasks without human intervention. Uh, we also have impersonation, and this deals with the ability of the bot to mimic human behavior. And this makes it challenge to really distinguish it um, from a genuine user or from a real human being. Bots also have the characteristic of being repetitive. So bots excel at performing repetitive tasks uh, consistently and accurately. Um, and then, of course, this makes them efficient for various activities. And then we have data interactions and bots can interact with data sources, uh, APIs and databases 
And of course, this enables them to retrieve, uh, modify, or also delete um, information. In terms of bots, uh, we have various types and they are broadly classified. And these are some of the types um, generally classified into, that's for bots. So we have search engine bots, and these are bots that call websites to gather information for search engine indexing. We also have chat bots, and these are AI powered bots, and these are designed uh, to interact with users in a conversational manner. And we've seen more and more of this especially with the explosion of um, AI-driven uh, chatbots. We also have social media bots, and these are bots that automate actions on social media platforms, such as uh, liking, following, or posting. We have web scrapers, and these are bots that are used to extract data uh, from websites for various purposes. We also have malicious bots, and these are bots are specifically created to perform harmful activities. Uh, so this can include uh, scraping, uh, account takeovers, DDoS attacks, um, amongst others also spreading malware and also aiding in data exfiltration. And then of course also malicious bots can be used for IP spoofing. In terms of bot trends, um, these are some of the trends that we are seeing. Um, first of all, bots are getting smarter and more uh, sophisticated. So this um, has been proven and especially more so uh, with what we call capture. Uh, this is a Turing test uh, that's designed to differentiate human internet users from software bots. Uh, this does this by providing a challenge that is easy for a human user to solve, but very difficult, ideally impossible for programs to solve. And I'm sure most of us have interacted uh, with captures when we um, try and access uh, our website. So what's happening is that these bots are getting smarter. In as much as capture now has uh, basically evolved from capture to recapture, and we even now have recapture version three, the bots are still able to bypass uh, this form of uh, identification. Um, so this means they're getting smarter and smarter. And in fact, there are some studies that suggest um, that up to 50% of challenges that are passed successfully are done so by bots. So these bots, are, of course, you know, they are programmers. They're also relying on AI behind them, making them uh, extremely smart and extremely able to bypass um, some of these bot prevention um, measures. We've also seen an increase in what we call Capture Farm. And basically, Capture Farm um, is an automated project that a bot developer can query, and they use uh, a pool of human workers to solve capture challenges around the clock. So they usually, uh, in this case, the master or the controller will get inexpensive labor from foreign locations. And then they use these Capture Farms uh, leveraging simple APIs that allow a client bot to call the service when it encounters a capture. And then the workers will solve the capture and will deliver the response token back to the bot, uh, to the master, which enters it and continues and continues its attack. So this is also a trend that you're seeing um, that is being utilized more and more um, to try and evade and actually get data um, using bots. Finally, we've also seen an increase in the use of sophisticated tools, uh, bot tools such as uh, Phantom JS. So, one, what we know is that there's a common uh, method uh, to bypass many uh, of these bot protection techniques by using what we call a headless browser. And this headless browser simulates a real web browser and it can execute um, the client side JavaScript detection scripts. So in this example, uh, Phantom JS is, example, is an example of such browser, but even common browsers, um, they can use this, uh, this mode by using a web, a web driver. And a web driver is a request coming from another application, in most cases a, a bot, but not actually the real browser. So all of this, the main trend is basically the sophistication uh, we are seeing when it comes to bots, 
um, if it's the capture farms, if it's the use of more sophisticated tools, and we expect this to grow uh, with time, especially now as we are advancing in artificial intelligence. Great, so with that overview of what bots are, next we'll take a bot, look at bot protection. And the first thing we look at is the impact of malicious bot activities on our web applications. So we've seen we have the good bots, the useful bots, but we also have a dark side to these automated bots. And when it comes to malicious bots, uh, what we see uh, in terms of the impact on our applications is first of all denial of service. So this affects the availability of your service, uh, of your application or networks. So bots, uh, they may attempt to cause slowdowns uh, or, down, or downtime on your website, uh, the app or API, and this can be done by making repeated high volume requests to your server. So this can be used uh, for nefarious purposes. If the bots do start a DDoS attack, this again can be taken advantage of, and it can actually cause a loophole whereby malicious traffic or data can be used to infiltrate your network. Uh, we also have in related to this denial of service uh, the speed or responsiveness of your application or web page um, and this will also affect uh, the user experience and um, you've often seen maybe within uh, a holiday period uh, as an example you're trying to book uh, a ticket um, in your airline but you're not being able to go through sometimes bots can be used uh, actually to get some of these prices or some of the tickets are of course impacting the real users who want to use that service. So again, uh, this is a downside of malicious bots. Uh, we also have SEO ranking, which is search engine um, optimization. And this is mostly used with bot scrapers. So bot scrapers scrape a content from websites and republish it uh, without permission. And this can hurt uh, your SEO because it can result in duplicate content uh, with the script content appearing higher in the search results. Uh, we also have safe browsing and this is where now malicious bots uh, can also be used to infect your applications uh, and your systems with viruses and malware. And also bots uh, can be used to spread uh, fraud and also instigate fraud. And this can happen in various ways. Um, the bot can be used um, in the fraud attack, uh, probably to do the initial vulnerability scanning. Um, you can also have automated fraud attacks, for example, phishing, uh, bot-driven account takeover attacks. And these account takeover attacks can include uh, credential staffing and brute forces. Uh, we also have another type of manipulation, which is ad manipulation, uh, where bots uh, they can engage in fraud, fraudulent or deceptive activities uh, related to online advertising. So in this, we can have uh, click frauds, impression frauds, ad frauds, um, ad injections, cookie stuffing, and also fake engagements. So of course, we know with this ad manipulation, it will undermine uh, the transparency, the fairness, and of course, trustworthiness of online uh, advertising ecosystems. So having looked at what impacts those malicious bots have on our systems, on our applications, we now currently have different approaches that are used in bot uh, detection and prevention. Um, the first one is what we call the static approach. Uh, and this, uh, we know it as rate limiting. So this uses a request threshold and what we call a time period. So the rate limiting, you are basically trying um, to stop a bot attack by, by looking at how many times probably your backend web application is being accessed um, and setting a threshold for it, saying within this specific period of time, if, for example, this number of attempts are exceeded, um, a block request uh, can occur. We also have what we call the bot challenges, and these challenges uh, can include uh, captures or JavaScript challenges. And these are actually now being automated so that, uh, of course, you know, a bot will not be able to solve, for example, the JavaScript challenge. 
and with that definite uh, answer, it's going to be blocked. We also have behavioral analysis, and these rely on various methods. Uh, we can use threat intelligence uh, to really give us a profile of the traffic, to look at the reputation, uh, to look at malicious, uh, IP addresses and domains, and if they are indeed malicious, they can be blocked. We also have uh, behavioral profiling, and this uh, includes behavioral analysis, uh, which um, so includes creating profiles of normal user behavior. Uh, this is based on legitimate user interactions. So, for example, this can include analyzing uh, patterns such as mouse movements, keystrokes, uh, scrolling behavior and so on and so forth. So by understanding, of course, typical human behavior uh, anomalies that are associated with bot activity can be identified. We also have integration uh, of machine learning and machine learning and statistical model uh, can help us to establish baselines for legitimate user behavior. So these models we know are used to uh, train to use historical data uh, including a combination of bot interactions and also human interactions. So a combination of these um, interactions, the baselines, the machine learning threat intelligence falling under behavioral analysis can indeed be used um, to mitigate and to stop um, attacks from malicious bots. But however, we do know that bots are becoming more sophisticated and in so doing, we need also to keep on developing new ways um, of detecting and preventing such attacks. Great, so with that um, overview, uh, the first part of the presentation, I will now go to the next section, which is the demo. And for this, I'll ask my colleague, uh, Toby O'Tolloring, to take over. Toby, over to you. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Yep. Awesome. Yep. So uh, I'm trying to share my screen. Please let me know where you can see my screen. My computer has not been in of best behavior. Well, thank you, Andrew. I thank you everyone for your patience. And I think Andrew has done a very great job of um, creating a very solid background about bots, uh, what are the pros and cons of bot activities in our environment how they can um, overwhelm our resources, causing denial of legitimate access to resources, how they may be used both for good and for bad. So I'm not going to try to, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Please, if you um, want to try out any of the scenarios that we're going to be talking about or that we've discussed, please find um, the, the, the blog post that Andrew mentioned. It will be shared in the chat. I'll also be using that blog post as well as a guide for this demo because we only have a very um, short amount of time. My plan is to show you how we use Bot Manager to prevent illegitimate access, how you can also gain some form of control over Bot Manager. So basically, what are the things that you can do once you observe? Because eventually the security posture of the environment is not going to solely be um, on you. So we are also providing some things. I mean, for the most part, it's a, it's a partnership. So and every customer's environment is different. So we really can't have a completely baked solution for everyone. We are going to have something that caters to the baseline and then you can always customize to your environment. And some of the examples that Andrew has mentioned so far involve um, rate limiting, behavior analysis, doing browser challenges. Some of these things help you to, you know, look for that test that says, is this a bot? Is this human? And then after that, the next phase is, is this bot a good bot or is it a bad bot? And also there are some bots that actually customize for that are actually like written in-house. Um, there's like the rapid advancement in automation. So there's so many bot activities going on. So uh, all of these steps are things that you have to put into consideration. And we went over some of that in the blog post. So the my demo today initially was, I, was, I, I plan to cover about four different scenarios. 
but uh, with the way time is set up and having to switch between too many screens, I think it would just be better to probably just display two. But if we have time, I'll go over the third one. But uh, most of the scenarios I'm going to be talking about, uh, they can be found in the blog post. So my uh, tiny agenda, just can you confirm that you can see my screen, Andrew? Yes, we can see a screen clearly. Okay. Uh, please uh, just permit me. I may be a little bit. Um, I I go through a bit of anxiety every now and then, so uh, everything might be a little bit out of place. But I'll always try to make sure I get back in line. So my plan is to uh, for this demo is that uh, I'll show that we are using a bot to manage access and not human being, and then I will try to show a simple IP IP spoofing scenario, and then um, I'm show you how. We, we we try to detect that and what messages you should see in your WAF when you're checking your logs. Um, I'll try to um, use a scraper bot to send a request to try to go uh, script a website and it's, we should be able to deny that. And then finally, I have a bot that should go to a bank website and try to fetch credit card, like basically card information. Not necessarily, not necessarily a bad bot, so it could be a website that does like for like I could use the bot in building a website that does like card comparison. So you want to check different APRs and you want to get different interest rate and you just want to like fetch different information from different banks. At the same time, of course, it can be used for something illegitimate because again, I'm sure I'm looking for card access. But either way, I'm just gonna try to use this and I can say, okay, in this case, I'm not using it for illegitimate access. I want to use this for illegitimate access. So I want to permit it because by default. <laughs> that would probably be denied based on some attributes. So how do I allow in that case? Basically, I'm trying to think, we are trying to think about scenarios that you are likely to find in your environment and things that you can do or steps that you can take to, you know, work around what are the attributes available to for me to play around with, to create a, to craft out a rule that will either permit or deny that access. So uh, for times where uh, my, my app gateway might be updating or something, I'll probably just go to the logs and show logs, or I'll go to the blogs and talk about what I'm currently working on in the app gateway. So these are the four things that I'm going to be doing. And then eventually I'll go into logs because I don't want to be switching between the demo scene and the logs. So I'll go into logs and then I will show the result of all the logs, all of, of most of these things that we're doing here. And then uh, we'll probably take and if there's any question that has been posted in the chat that can, everyone can benefit from, um, I will ask my colleagues to read that question out and we'll try to answer the question and then we'll call it a day. Uh, for one of the things that Andrew mentioned is this, this bot manager comes with our WAF, so it's, they are kind of like bundled together. So it would be great to take good advantage of it. If you are not familiar, you can go to your manage rules. So basically you go to your app gateway policy this is my app gateway policy here. So I'm not sure of, um, because on webinars like this, we have people from different backgrounds. We have like beginners and we have experts. So please feel free to, um, if you feel like this is too beginner level for you, just jump, jump to the blog posting, you know, so like we don't uh, take all your time. So uh, basically you could just go to the manage rule set and when you come to manage, and good thing, we currently have our, we will be going to, the DRS is now going, to be in public preview that will be announced shortly. So for customers who have been asking us, hey, there's DRS in front door, but it's not available in App Gateway. So that right now is now in public preview. And I'll, I'll be using that in this test. I actually did it on CRS and this became publicly available and I wanted to, you know, let um, people who are on the call to see that they can actually go and assign and change that from CRS. I mean, if, Based on all um, um, all uh, SLA agreement and on, of course, the terms and conditions around previews, you can always switch to the 2.1 preview set uh, rule set. Well, I did most of this test at the blog post, well, 3.2, and I just found out that we're now in public preview recently. So, um, in case something does not work, that's my caveat. <laughs> so, all right, and you can so you can change that, and you can also, you know. I hope you are using the latest bot manager rule set. This is a bit, a little bit outdated, so feel free to use this one. So that said, you can. Um, what does our bot manager rule set look like? Uh, this is what it looks like. So, it's your search engine crawlers. I currently allowed this, 
and I can show you if I want to disable this, I can just click on this and then I can go here and I can disable or just use change action and either you know block whatever is coming from there or I can just allow it. So if I want to disable the rule completely, I'll just come here and I'll disable it. So it's pertinent that we actually know how to even block a rule or like, you know, where do I go if I want to do something? So this is where you come. What kind of rules do we have? Ah, so we have the, so basically most bots are either verified as a legitimate bot, like a good bot, or they are unverified, nobody knows them, but they might be good. And then they are the ones that they are known bad bots based on threat intelligence, you know, aggregation of public IPs that have been known to be malicious and all of that information. So for bots that have been known to be uh, malicious, this rule is probably what's going to block them. For the ones that are probably being spoofed, this is the rule that will be triggered. We'll see example of that in the logs if time permits. If, if there's no time, we'll probably see that in the blog post that I've written. We have some search engine crawlers that are not verified. Uh, but they are search engine crawlers anyway, and you feel like they are going to be useful. So maybe you're using um, search engine crawlers that are not the popular ones, like Bing. They are still you know, search engine crawlers that are going to be useful for your indexing, uh, for your search engine optimization, for your ads, and all of that. So um, by default, some of this you'll find as labeled as good bot and they'll be allowed. But there might be some, again, like Andrew mentioned, there are some headless, uh, there are headless browsers now and there are bots and you can, you know, you can edit headers, uh, which hopefully I will have enough time to show one of those examples in my four um, scenarios where you can actually go into the headers and change some parameters. You can change the, the user agent that is being sent across and you can falsify your request. So you can do like IP spoofing where you want the IP that you're sending across to be a different public IP from your own IP. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do that as well. So these are some of the um, rule sets in Bot Manager. All right, so uh, feel free, we have uh, we have documentation around this. I'll be sharing that in the chat shortly so you can see what our bot manager rule set looks like and some quick description of this you'll find there as well. Second. All right. So uh, let me go back again to my agenda because I tend to talk too much and just go off script. OK, I wanted to start with, so for my demo, I'm going to be using Juice Shop. Are you, if you have been a fan of our webinars, we use this website a lot. I promise you very soon, we'll probably stop using it. <laughs> so, um, but it's, the, it's very easy and it got so many vulnerabilities, so we can always use that to show our, um, how our, 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 our products work. Today, I'm not going to be only using Juice websites. I'm going to be, like I mentioned earlier, I'll be using the uh, this bank website. So uh, don't be afraid. It's, uh, it was developed by IBM some years ago, and it was supposed to be used for, uh, for trying out, basically testing vulnerability of your website. So it's similar to Juice Shop, but uh, it's it's riddled with, with so much vulnerability as well. So um, this is the bank website. It belongs to, uh, so it's, it's basically it's open source and you can always use it. You can get the copy from GitHub as well and you can use it for a couple of tests. So uh, right now I am using this website and I can go around, I can try to log in basically from my browser. If I wanted to do the same thing with a bot, I can, all I need to do is uh, get the kind of the web driver for my browser. So in this case, I am using, because I'll be using uh, my Edge, I'll be using the web driver for, for Edge, and then I'll take that web driver, and then I will try to simulate requests from human being, but I'll be using a tiny bot. And the bot I'll be using, so I'll be using my visual code to, uh, to create the Python script, and I'll be sending that from here. So I have my first test here, excuse me. And like I mentioned earlier, I have imported some of these modules here, so please feel free to use the library. Uh, I'll be posting this in the blog. I didn't post this one in the blog post for a reason. I don't know why I didn't put that in the blog post. But again, this is just me trying to show that uh, we are going to be going from human interaction on this website now to try to use bot. And most of the tests here will be done by a bot. So again, if you come to the blog post here, this is the blog post, you will find some of these things there. I put some of the codes there. You can just copy them. So they are very, very easy to try out. They are going to be either screenshot or something that you can just 
copy. Sorry, this is tiny. I apologize for that. So there are things that you can just copy and use yourself. All right, again, um, just trying to create a flow here. This is the website, and instead of using this, I'm going to try to just quickly send something from here. And what I've done here is I have created a variable called sir to be my service, and you should use the uh, edge driver. That's the driver for my browser here. And then I'll be assigning that to this variable, and then I'll create a, another variable called driver that we use that um, web driver. Now, once I assign the driver to my web driver, which is for edge, I can then do anything with that driver, like I can tell you to go get this website, juiceshop.server. Now, this juiceshop.server, I have mapped it to the app gateway's public IP. So basically, we have two ways by which you can access your application. This is the application right here. You can either go directly through this web application. In my case, the application was done with um, app service. So if you see Azure websites appended to a URL, is most likely developed by an Azure App Service. So this is a vulnerable website because it's just being hosted in App Service. There is no particular protection for it. Now, if I take this URL and I put it at the back of my App Gateway, now I now have my App Gateway and I can use my App Gateway to protect it. And that's what I did. Now, instead of using my app, uh, the public IP of my App Gateway, in this case is, um, just a second, I'm gonna put that out. So the public IP of my app gateway is, where is that? Okay, I can't find it right now, but I have mapped that public IP to something very easy for me to remember, which is just job the server for this exact reason, because I knew I was gonna forget. I know that I'm going to forget my public IP. So I have mapped it to juice shop the server in my host file. So I'm not going to be talking about my app gateway's public IP for the most part in this uh, presentation. Oh, I found it eventually. But again, it's not all that useful because it's right here. This is my app gateway's public IP right here, 20.253. But the most important part is I've mapped it to this. So instead of, so this is, I can get either access either directly to an application or I can protect it with App Gateway. So if you're not familiar with that, that is how you actually bring about the protection using WAF and Bot Manager and Custom Rule. Put your application behind the App Gateway. So this access going through just the server is the one that's protected. And this one here is the one that is just freely hosted over the website. So this is vulnerable to so many attacks. You know, um, I think this was written with uh, PHP. So PHP attack, most likely SQL injection, your RFI, LFI, yeah you can go through here but when you come through your your app gateway access the port manager should be able to prevent a lot of things so the first thing i wanted to do was to show is i'm going to try to access using a bot to try to access the service which is the one that is directly um without the protection and then i'll try to do the same with the app gateway and i'll try to do um I'll try to do a control and then I'll try to do IP spoofing and then we'll try to see how our bot is going to, our bot manager is going to react to that. All right. So I'm going to be, uh, like I mentioned earlier, so this is the juice of the server and I'm assigning every, and I'm telling the driver to go get this. Now I can either get my response and I can tell my response to be, excuse me. So I'm going to try to test to get this shop the server here. And once I've done that, Whatever I want to do with driver now, I can tell the driver to uh, get anything that I want it to do. I can tell you to get the title. I can get driver to quit. I can begin to send commands to this page via that. Well, let's look at. So I have done that and I'm going to run that real quick. It's. Uh, this file. Right. So that's opening my second screen. I'm going to bring it here real quick. So I am going to, I'm telling my computer is pretty slow today for some reason. I'll be doing too many love tests. So I am telling to go to juiceshop.server here, which is the one for the public, uh, which is the one for the app gateway. So the issue, um, when I do that, it's going to try to go there and try to tell me, okay, this is what's going on. I can see Microsoft is being controlled by automated test software. So it's able to detect that, but because I'm not doing anything illegitimate, 
it's like, okay, we can see you. You are automated software, but any attempts from here will try to stop you. So that's what it's telling me here that, hey, Edge is able to tell you immediately that this request is from an automated software, but the, the same page is opening and you can see the public IP of the app gateway. So I've told you to do that. Um, now I can start getting things. I can tell you to go on that website and look for Orange because it's a juice shop. I can, you know, do all of that, all of that, you know, whatever I wanted to do. So I'm going to close this out. So that is how I use a bot. Now what I do from here is now what determines is it a legitimate request? I might have to just scrape and all of that. So that's an example of how I can use a bot to do things. And I can now begin to use this driver as my uh, variable, and then I just begin to put action action to it. Like I can tell it to quit. I can tell it to do this. I can tell it to do that. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. That would be the first one. That, okay. Now that I've shown that I'm doing that with the bot, I can then say, okay, what's the next thing I want to do with my bot? So I'm going to come back to my agenda just to keep me in track because again, keep me in track because I'm always talking. Should we uh, do that with bots? Now, next thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to do things with. Now that I know that I can get I can get bot access to my application, I'll try to do a quick simple IP spoofing, right? So uh, I'm going to be using a simple command for this one because I don't want to make this too complex for us. So what I'm going to try to do in this case is I'll try to do a call command. I'll use a user agent. So user agents are like identifiers of in 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 our headers that we use to make when we're making a request. So we are saying I want to use a user agent, say for Mozilla. I want to use the one for a Python for for a Python application. There are so many user agents there. For your request, you always come with a user agent uh, for for this uh, bot bot test. So for the, for this one, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do three scenarios. I'm going to first of all try to use a call command to try to get information from this website, this same website here, which is directly through the application. The second scenario I'm trying to, going to try to do is I will try to do the same thing with the one with protection, which is the one with app gateway. And then the third one is I will try to make a request, but I'll try to falsify my identity so that my public IP as the request of, of that request would not be from me. I'll try to hide my identity and use somebody else's public IP so that it won't be traced to me. So those three scenarios I will try to do, and I'll show the result eventually. Um, in case we can get to that, it's in the blog post. So the first one is directly, I want to make a call request to this um, uh, app, app service, which is hosting my OWASP juice shop. So I'm going to come here. I think I did this recently, so I can always uh, so excuse me. Oh, okay, I'm ready. In. So if I try to go to, okay, so I'm doing a curl and I'm using my Bing bot user agent. So that's the user agent I'm using here. If you are not familiar with, uh, I've mentioned some things about user agents. So just go online, you'll see enough um, of this user agent. And I put that in my, uh, in, in quotation here. My high is that I want only the header. And my A is I'll be using this user agent here. So this is user agent I'm going to be using the, the Bing user agent. And that's the version 2.0. And I will be going to my URL. So that's all I'm just that's all I'm just sending here. To so just forget this is just a call command, the user agent, and the URL. That's all. So if I send this value here, it should give me the header for this page. And okay, I don't know what's going on. Okay, uh, my PC is needs some aspiring. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to close that and launch it again. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on there. So I'm gonna try to run this as admin, of course. Yes. Uh, if you're wondering what's going on, I'm trying to. I'm waiting for my PC to run. This is just so. And I'm trying to be patient. OK, so we are back. All right. So let me see. And I have to type all of that. This is what I was trying to prevent. OK, good thing. I think I still have it saved written somewhere else. So I'm just going to try to copy it right here. 
All right. So as you can see, I just did a curl. I use that uh, use my user agent like I mentioned Bing and to my URL and I can get a 200. Okay, I could have used Postman, but I don't want to kill my computer anymore with anything that is going to be resource heavy. <laughs> so that you can see we've got a 200. Okay, for that. Now let's do the same thing, but in this case, I'm going to be running that with the juice shop server, which is the protected by app gateway version. So I'm going to run the same thing, but just in this case, I'm just changing the same curl command that I used earlier. Well, in this case, I'm using the Bing and I'm going to my gshop.server. Uh, for different reasons, you can be doing this. You want to check if this juice shop um, is being properly ranked by your Bing. You can see Bing has access to it. For different reasons, you might use this call command. This is still legitimate. We're not really doing anything wrong. But at this point, the app gateway should become, will start being suspicious of what you're trying to do. So you're going to start getting 403 forbidden. And so as you begin to get some of this, uh, this stuff, you begin to investigate what's going on in your environment and app, the, you can go into your logs and you can begin to see what App Gateway is trying to do. The third scenario I, I mentioned was um, I would try to spoof a public IP. Um, I don't have this one written down and I've lost it in my but, but I can always copy it from my blog post, like I mentioned earlier. So if you come to my blog post, I did an example on that, I believe. So, yep, this is it. So in this case, if you can see my screen, I'm going to try to make it bigger. So I've done, um, again, I'm looking for the whole header here, and I'm using X forwarded for, this is the public IP I wanted to, to, to falsify. This is on my public IP. I can always show you what my IP is. Um, let's see what my IP ends with. What is my IP? Uh, I think it ends with 93.58. So that's not my 97 dot. That's my as my first doctor, 58 that's my last doctor. So you can see that that's not my uh, public IP. Where's my public again? So this is 98.101. So I'm trying to falsify with this public IP address. I'm using this user agent in this case. I'm using the Yandex user agent and I'm using to the, I'm going to the same juice shop server. So if I copy this one here and I take that. Take it to we are back here, and I do this. The app gateway also blocks it. So what you get in this case is it's not only blocking it; it's also tell you that this is being this person is trying to falsify the identity. So in case you don't have time to go into the log because it looks like a unit of time, this is what you're going to see. So you can see here, this is what's going to look like after that. Uh, the message is malicious bots that have falsified identity. It has been blocked. I'm trying to, I'm trying to request juice shop to server. It's going to give you all of that information. Okay, we're almost out of time, so I'm going to just quickly jump to the next one real quick. Uh, the, the third one in my agenda. Second. So the third one is how you wanted to do, I've done the IP spoofing, we've done. So this scraper bot, I wanted to quickly show the header, but I think I went into detail in the blog. So you find some information on that. For the final one, which is allow card bot, allow um, get, ex, um, get access to the bot. Again, this is a bot that is easily, it will easily be seen as a malicious bot. So for that, that's also going to take some time, but I'll see if I can quickly uh, try to make it work. So I have, I have to go to, back to my hub gateway real quick here, and then change my backend pool to, from the juice shop to the bank website. So I have a bank, so that way I'll be able to do a test where I can protect the, uh, the bank website as well. So I'm going to try to quickly toss my tool, which wall. So this is my bank and I'm going to try to quickly close that in there. Yeah, I could have used a second app gateway, but I was beginning to overwhelm all my resources, so I decided not to. Looks like that's going to bite me in the behind very soon. All right. So while that is saving, uh, what this is supposed to do is I'm supposed to run a test. When in that test, when I run it, my app my my bot is supposed to go to the bank website and look for those card details and this is what it's supposed to look like when i run it this is my card details on that website you can see i can see the bronze card student card uh lending deposit card anything that has to do with like a bit of card information just go and fetch that so from there 
I can then say, okay, now they have this gold card, platinum card. I can then begin to uh, uh, use my bots to get more information like, okay, the silver card, the bronze card, what do I want to do with that? What is the interest rate on that? What's the API on that? How can I, you know, can I craft like a fake user and apply for the card? So basically it can go in different direction, which is it can go in the good direction, which is, okay, I'm building a website. It's going to compare different APR from different companies. It's going to compare uh, the uh, interest rate. That's good. That's a good thing to want to do. But in this case, we don't know what you're doing. We don't know if it's good, if it's bad. You know, it's, it's not a verified bot yet. Again, it could be bad because someone's trying to, you know, falsify the identity. So in that case, I have done um, this in there. Let me see if my app gateway is nearly ready. Okay, it looks like it might be ready now. So now if I go to my app gateway's public IP, it should take me to the uh to this bank's website. Again, if you're just joining us, this is not a real bank, this is just a demo bank. So if I take my app gateway now, let me see if it's finished updating. All things being equal. Okay, so uh it cannot my bucket setting is probably unable to ping the backend host. So I'm just quickly going to try to come here and I'm going to try to update that value to the bank website. So this is the bank website that I need to be using for this demo. Control Z. I'm running out of time and I can already sense that I'm not going to be able to finish this. But in case I'm able to finish, I'm I love uh, adrenaline and love living on the edge sometimes. So in case this is a bit of you. So what is that? Okay, I think we uh, we are near there. So if all things go well, once this is ready, this should take me to the bank website. So my test would have been to run a test real quick directly on the direct um, website of the bank. I mean, these are all the cards information from different places I'm trying to get all the information from. And the second test will be to go through the same bank, but this time protected by our app gateway, which is to show you that, you know, for different um, organizations, in, uh, insurance, finance, whatever, you can always use the, yep. So now we, I can access it via my app gateway. So yeah, we're still on track. So now I can go via my app gateway to get to the bank, or I can go directly to their URL to get to the bank. And now to do my, uh, my bot test here, I have a bank card, but here, I think I post this as well in my blog so you can test it out. If I didn't, I'll make sure to uh, either upload it there or put it in our GitHub. If, but, and by the way, if you're not aware of our GitHub, we have a GitHub. It's just aka.ms slash aznetsec. So aka.ms slash aznetsec, you will find our blog there, our uh, GitHub there. Feel free to use, um, you'll find a lot of artifacts you can use. And for our, um, for the blog, uh, blogs, they all live in easy netsec blog. So aka.ms slash easy netsec blog. So you go there, you'll find most of our blog posts in that in this location. Okay, um, sorry, I'm currently working out of an Airbnb because I had to uh, do a quick travel. So internet here is pretty poor. Well, so far, thank you for your can so far. So okay, back to sorry, back to my demo. Uh, this is Arturo. I'm gonna go back to my um to my Visual Studio. So I have a bank in here. I have my URL here. So you can see I'm going directly to their websites in this case and I'm looking for cards. I'll be searching for cards. I'll be creating a variable called soup and I'll be using my HTML parser to pass the HTML on this on the website of this URL. I'll send that into my soup and I can get the response. I'll get the text file for that. So if I do my bank card real quick, uh, bank card this, um, yep, it's loading, but on my product screen, I'll be bringing that shortly. Yep, so it's a Python script. It's running, and because I'm going directly to the website, it's going to go to that website and fetch all this card information for me as shown in my blog post. So you can see, so I, all I'm trying to try to get is this card. Now, where I go from here, whether good or bad, depends on my intention. But I'm assuming that this is a um, company that you know, let's say they want to do something good, but our stuff is, is blocking them. So in this case, it went straight, but let's go through the uh, our website, which will be in this case, I will just replace my, it will be, I'm going to replace it with the URL of the one that goes directly from our company, from our, excuse me. 
I'll be using the URL from the app gateway, the one that's blocked by app gateway. So excuse me. So I'm going to quickly update that. I have the link somewhere in here. All right. Okay. So I want to update that in my in my bot, and then I'll try to do the same test and show that the app gateway is able to block. But that will be the final thing I'm going to do. Uh, feel free to use the blog post for any test that you want to to uh, for any of these things. You see the information in there. So, all oh, right. Ah, sorry. This is what happens when you are lacking coffee in the morning. For those of us in the West Coast. All right. So I'm going to update that in here real quick. And I'm going to save. And I'm going to run the same thing. So again, this is, should be opening in my other screen. Yep. It's loading my other screen and you should be seeing the app gateways response to that in a second. Oh, right now it's being permitted because I have I have allowed it to uh, to go through this. Now, if I want to deny that, I have created a deny or allow that in my I've, I was doing my test in the other time and I created a script to allow it. So if I go to my if I go to my custom rules during my last test, if I can pull. So you're out of time. I just want to make sure that I, I show you where to go to to follow up on this to read up on it. So if I go to my web application for our wall, I have created a custom rule to permit that. So if you go to my custom rule, I created it uh, to allow that. So uh, it should be somewhere in here. I'm using a Python script and I have, so I think it should be this one. So I have created, I didn't, I didn't change the name. Unfortunately, I supposed to change this from to, uh, to bank card. So I have created a thing that says, if you see a Python request coming with this user agent, allow that traffic. But for more information on that, you will see it in the blog post here. Um, so I have, so this is me, it's been permitted here. And if I want to, I've allowed it here, but if I don't do that allow, which is currently being allowed, it will have been denied by the app gateway. So yeah, uh, we're already uh, out of time, sorry. Well, thank you so much for your patience. I hope this has been very informative for you. Um, Andrew, do we have any question that you think we should attend to real quick? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we do have we a do couple have a questions. Couple yes, please. Uh, the, uh, first the first is, is does Microsoft, Microsoft provide denial of known bad bots as part of the service? I think I um, I should. Uh, I think I have uh, explained that some minutes ago when you go to manage rules. Yes, so you. Is by default when you use your uh, bot manager rule set. By default, this comes as bad bot. I is blocked by default. So, and we are using threat intelligence to get all of this information. So, this is sourced from you can see by threat intelligence. So, Microsoft threat intelligence, which is the MC team, they have you know a corpus of uh, uh, a, a compendium of known malicious bots and their source and all of that. So, we currently deny that. Great, thank Great. you. Thank you. Uh, the next question, the next we, question have we have is, is I'm using front door front with, door Azure, with WAF. Azure WAF. What front door and WAF tiers do I need to get the bot manager rule set standard or premium? Can you hear uh, me? I, yeah, I can hear you. I can take that. Uh, so in this case, we usually recommend to use the premium front door as it's security optimized. Um, so with premium, you get um, the Azure WAF with the default rule sets as well as its bot manager rule set. So in this case, uh, we, for security optimization, uh, go with the premium uh, SKU of front door. Great, thank you. And the last question we have is, in cases when bad bots are used for DDoS of the Azure application, will this bot manager rule set help me to block these bots? Yes, that's correct. It can be used um, to do uh, blocking for bad bots um, that do also now go and cause the DDoS attacks. So that's also part of the uh, protection within the Azure WAF uh, rule set. Great. Um, well, that's all the questions that we seem to have time for. Um, with that, I'd like to thank you, Toby and Andrew, for being our guests today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. 
At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities. A good start will be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We'd love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash Azure NetSec feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.